Hi guys, it's Petrina, your go-to girl for learning how to make fit work in a crazy busy world. And today we're gonna get crazy informational all about chemo. No, I know, I know, I know, this channel is not going to be all about cancer going forward. I just wanted to share what I've learned in my first two treatments for those of you who either may have been recently diagnosed with cancer or maybe you know somebody who's been diagnosed with cancer and you wanna know what you can do to help them out. In this video, I'm gonna talk all about different side effects you can possibly expect when you undergo chemo. And I'm also going to give a link to a blog post for gift and useful things ideas for you that will take the bite away from those side effects. If you're someone who's wondering what chemotherapy is like, maybe you're about to undergo it or you know someone who is, I will gladly tell you that if you're someone who's gotten your viewpoint on it from older movies, it's a lot different now and doctors really take great steps in minimizing the side effects associated with chemo. Don't get me wrong, it ain't no party, but you really shouldn't be hunched over a toilet vomiting all the time or living in a bubble. Chemotherapy sessions can vary from very short to all the way I've heard of people taking it up to seven hours to do. Mine typically take about three hours. It basically involves you getting up and either having an IV set up or using a port where the chemotherapy is infused. Most cancer centers have what they call an infusion room, and most of them I think are pretty open where you'll be sitting next to somebody else. So if privacy is an issue, you may wanna shop around for a different hospital or cancer center. Me personally, I really liked being able to talk to other cancer patients while getting my chemotherapy. I found it therapeutic. Before you even get started on each infusion, your blood levels are gonna be checked to make sure that your white blood cell count and your red blood cell counts are high enough to handle handle another chemotherapy dose. Your oncologist will go over the results with you and then you'll be escorted back to the infusion room. While you're doing chemotherapy, you can play around on your phone, you can listen to music, you can read, you can talk to your neighbor. Whatever you do, I recommend bringing a chemosabi. This is a friend of yours that'll sit and attend to you, help you out if you need to get up to use the restroom, which you're going to have to do, and just be a good buddy for you. So if you are someone watching this who's a friend of someone about to undergo chemo, make sure you offer them your services as a chemosabi. Depending on the type of cancer you have in the cell grades, your chemotherapy regimen may vary. There are a lot of different ones out there. For me specifically, I am doing a 20 week regimen, starting off with four every other week infusions of adriamycin and cytotoxin. After I'm done with those four cycles, I'll go for 12 weekly cycles of Taxol. And even though there are a wide variety of chemotherapy regimens, there are some big side effects that are associated with most of these. The biggest and most scariest for most people is the nausea and the vomiting. And I am happy to say that I've had one really bad instance with the nausea and that was the day of my infusion. I got home and I was nauseous throughout most of the night. I did not, however, throw up, so that is a win in my book. Nausea and vomiting are not fun, but there are many things you can do to help alleviate or prevent them. And when you do encounter nausea and vomiting, make sure to let your oncologist know because then the next chemotherapy infusion, they can tweak your meds a little bit to make sure the nausea is more manageable. Now, ways you can prevent and avoid nausea that don't involve medicine are eating bland foods, we're talking crackers, that kind of thing, drinking a lot of water, and eating small and frequent meals. Ginger handies can help, and I'm gonna put them in the gift guide in the blog post that is attached to this. I'm gonna put a comment in the video, and you can find it if you wanna take a quick peek at patrinahamfitness.com backslash chemo. So be sure to check that out. The next side effect is sore mouth and gums, and this can also be mouth sores. I have been completely paranoid about mouth ulcers since beginning chemotherapy, so I'm taking every step I possibly can to ensure that it doesn't happen to me. One of the big things for my particular chemo regimen is that when I am being infused the adriamycin, I chew on ice during the entire infusion. This will chill your mouth and hopefully prevent mouth sores and ulcers from happening. After the fact, you need to practice very good dental hygiene, rinsing out your mouth with a baking soda and salt solution every time after you eat, brushing your teeth with a soft toothbrush, and I particularly use biotin toothpaste and the dry mouth rinse. When it comes to sleeping, I also use xylitol melts to help keep my mouth moist throughout the evening. This can help reduce your risk of developing mouth sores, which I have not to date, knock on wood. Next up is a big one, and that is fatigue and tiredness, and it comes par for the course, I think, anytime you're dealing with chemo and you're reducing your blood cell counts in any sort of way, you are gonna get tired. The best way to deal with this 
is rest when your body wants you to. Don't be ashamed to take a nap. Body's working really hard to fight off those cancer cells, so let it by getting adequate rest. And next up is hair loss. Not very fun for most of us women out there, but something you'll probably have to deal with if you are doing chemotherapy. Best way to deal with it is a sense of humor, some fashionable scarves, and yes, some fun wigs. Next up are tummy issues, and they can be either constipation or diarrhea. Depending on which one you have, your oncologist will tell you which medications are okay for you to take. Both of them make sure that you're drinking plenty of fluids. For constipation, eat foods higher in fiber, and try eating prunes or drinking prune juice, hot tea, or lemon water to help stimulate things to move, if you know what I mean. Regular exercise helps as well, so make sure you're getting out there for a little bit each day. Now, when it comes to diarrhea, avoid milk and caffeine. Also, stay away from food that cause gas or are acidic, fatty, or fried, and gravitate towards foods containing pectin. We're talking bananas, avocados, beets, unspiced applesauce, and peeled apples. Also make sure you eat foods that are low in fiber, like bananas, rice, applesauce, toast, mashed potatoes, eggs, fish, cottage cheese, and yogurt. You should also probably increase foods containing potassium, like apricots, peach nectar, Bananas again, mashed potatoes, Powerade, or Gatorade. Dry skin can become an issue, so make sure you have a moisturizer handy that's lanolin-based, alcohol-free emollient, and non-hypoallergenic. You may also deal with rashes or nail changes. There are different products and creams you can try to help prevent that. And another potential side effect is your blood counts, lowering your white blood cell counts and your red blood cell counts. And when those drop, your ability to fight off infection drops. So it's very important to avoid people that have colds or other contagious illnesses, no matter how much or how badly you want to see them, don't. Don't eat meat or any food that hasn't been either cooked or washed. Make sure you wash your hands often. Don't touch pet waste or get into contact with reptiles, birds, or fishes. And when it comes to the low white blood cell count, if you are on a certain regimen, sometimes you will be permitted to have what's called Nulasta shots, and that will help get your white blood cell count up. I'm doing that, I love it, it totally works for me. But if you do take Nulasta, one of those side effects is going to be bone or muscle pain. And to help avoid this, your doctor may tell you that you should take Claritin, surprisingly enough, to help ward off the bone pain. Big fat disclaimer here, contact your doctor before you take any medication when you're on chemo. Please. It's just the smart thing to do, people. And before I close out on the side effects, I wanted to talk a little bit about chemo brain. It is a real thing. You will find that if you're doing chemo, your memory may slip a little bit. I was fixing something for dinner last week and I couldn't even remember what the word for parsley was. Don't stress about it too much. Have a sense of humor, laugh at yourself, positive attitude, and just believe that this too shall pass. In my humble opinion, the most two important things you can do while undergoing chemo is staying positive and staying active. The activity alone will perk you up a lot. I make sure to go out for a walk every morning, first thing in the morning while my energy levels are probably the highest throughout the day. And I just think it sets the day off on a very good tone. If you're watching this and you love somebody who has cancer, again, please be sure to check out the blog post I did at patrinahamfitness.com backslash chemo and you're gonna get some great gift ideas and you know things you can offer to help out your friend or loved one who is going through cancer answer right now. And I absolutely wouldn't be offended at all if you wanted to leave a comment on the blog post and leave some more suggestions on nice things to buy or do for the cancer patient in your life. I hope you found this helpful. As always, if you have any questions, you can shoot me an email over at coachpatrina at yahoo.com. It may take me a little bit to get back to you, but I will. If you have any suggestions for fitness or business related videos for me to do in the future, be sure to sound off in the comments below. I promise I'm not going to make my YouTube channel all about the big C. So just bear with me as I go through these informational kind of videos. <laughs> That's it for this week, guys. Take care and see you soon. Bye. <laughs>